Hi, this is Tom Stone. It's a great pleasure to welcome you to this presentation on Permanent Pure Awareness Masterclass. And uh, this is not the masterclass itself. This is about the masterclass so you can determine whether it's something you wanna do or not. We were just discussing before we came on the call that uh, pretty much everybody who's involved with inner greatness optimizing and the pure awareness techniques and freedom practice, everyone knows that there is a uh, fundamental goal that pretty much everybody has who takes this work. If they don't have, they should have. <laughs> and that is, it's to be able to live in pure awareness all the time. And so this presentation is about our path of how to get there. And so I'm gonna start the PowerPoint and we can get started. Okay, Permanent Peer Awareness Masterclass, subtitle Happiness 2.0. So everyone wants more in life, more money, more love or intimacy, maybe a nicer car, a nicer place to live. Maybe you'd like more peace of mind, like less anxiety or trauma. Basically, people want to be happy. And I remember an experience I had in sixth grade in grammar school. Uh, the teacher asked the class, what do you want to be when you grow up? And interestingly enough, one of the first kids who answered said, I want to be happy. And then just about everybody raised their hand. And when the teacher called on them, they said, I want to be happy too. Why did they say they want to be happy? Because they weren't happy. <laughs> but they longed to be happy. And the problem with happiness is when something makes you happy, it doesn't last very long. Why is that? It turns out that there are two kinds of happiness. There's a kind of happiness that comes from experiencing something that you enjoy. But when the experience of that fades away, the happiness tends to fade away too. So you might think that this is situational happiness or conditional happiness, because there's gotta be some condition in order to feel happy. That means that the happiness is dependent upon something happening that you enjoy. But what if there was a way to be happy all the time, independent of whatever is happening? What if it were possible to have permanent happiness that never goes away? You might be thinking, this guy must be nuts. <laughs> How could there be permanent happiness that never goes away? That's not possible. Well, but what if it was possible? And if it was possible to be happy all the time, who wouldn't want that? You might think that you would eventually get bored with it and then not be happy, but bored instead. What if there was a new kind of happiness that never gets boring? What if there was happiness 2.0? I got good news for you. Happiness 2.0 does exist and I'm gonna tell you what it is. And better yet, I'm gonna tell you how you can have it. I'm even gonna guide you in having an initial taste of it during this presentation. Wow, that's quite a promise. Okay, in order to have happiness 2.0, you need to have the direct experience of it. Just intellectually understanding it won't be enough. Amazingly enough, it is not dependent on something making you happy. It's a state of being, not a wave of happiness from the experience of something pleasant or exciting. And more good news is that it is a natural state and there's a way to access that state. There's also a way to make that state permanent in your life so that it never goes away. Happiness 2.0 is different. It redefines what happiness is. It is a form of absolute peace. It's a state of total equanimity and, and contentment. There are no conflicts in this state. It is a completely problem-free state of being. Problems can't exist there. There's no unhappiness. It's limitless. It's a state of total freedom. You can completely access your intuition and creativity all the time. 
in happiness 2.0 you can do anything it is what you've been looking for your whole life it's a state of being in which feeling wonderful never goes away wow to be able to live, to be able to live in happiness 2.0 there's something you must do Welcome, Diane. It's a state of being in which feeling wonderful never goes away. I already did that one. Come back to the PowerPoint. Yeah, to be able to, there's something you must do. There are two steps. The first step is very easy. And as promised, I'm going to guide you to have the experience of it during this presentation. Step one is to have a taste of the direct experience of it. That's easy, and you'll have that experience today. Mm. Step two takes longer, but fortunately, it isn't difficult. In order to make happiness 2.0 a permanent reality in your life, you need to do a bit of house cleaning. That's because you have lots of unresolved disruptive emotions inside of you. And that's because when you were very young, you got emotionally overwhelmed lots of times. You didn't like that. Nobody likes it. And even before you learned how to speak, you did your best to not get emotionally overwhelmed. But the only thing that you could do was to suppress the residual emotional pain. It was the best you could do at the time. When something emotionally painful happens, you get overwhelmed. <laughs> it's a good little graphic. <laughs> you just can't process all the emotional pain right when it happens. It's just too much. And when you can't process it all in the moment, it accumulates. Emotions have both content and energy. It is the sensation of the emotional energy that was too much to process. What you couldn't process when it happened got stored in your body. You got good at suppressing your emotions. The consequence of that was the accumulation of lots of incomplete emotional experiences. You tried to sweep the emotional energy under the rug. It's still under there. And because you've been doing this all your life, there's quite a bit of it still under there. Most people get good at emotional suppression, but there's a very basic problem with that. When you suppress the emotion, you think that it's gone. But even though you don't feel it, it's not gone. And certain circumstances can trigger these old emotions in addition, the suppressed emotional pain influences your thinking and your decisions. What's needed is some way to clear out, to clean out your inner emotional landscape and get rid of all your old emotional pain and emotional reactions. People have not known how to do that. But I had the great good fortune to discover exactly how to do that. Interestingly enough, I had to go through an extraordinary experience of getting shot in the chest by a deranged stranger to make this discovery. I survived it, obviously, yet I was left with PTSD. You know the saying, necessity is the mother of invention. Well, I certainly had a necessity, which was to find a way to completely cure the PTSD. By doing my own private research, I eventually found a simple insight that allowed me to completely cure the PTSD. I haven't had a single PTSD symptom in over 25 years, but it took having this traumatic event to discover how to do that. After my own recovery, I began to share what I had learned with friends and colleagues. I learned rapidly that you didn't have to be traumatized in order to benefit from the simple method that I had discovered. It works for resolving all kinds of emotional stress. So I invite you to watch and listen with an open mind. Just set aside your previous notions about needing to have things or experiences or excitement or pleasure to make you happy. People who learn my work say that this is unique and they haven't seen anything like it ever before. And they say that other things that they have tried haven't worked so well but they are elated, elated that they have finally found something that does work. It is simple, fast, easy to learn, and much more effective than anything else that they have tried. 
you just might have found what you've been looking for your whole life. Fasten your seatbelt. Here we go. So as promised, I'm going to give you the experience of happiness 2.0. Remember, this is just step one. It's going to be just getting a taste of happiness 2.0, but it will be kind of a short glimpse of what it is. You'll get distracted by thoughts, but that's okay because we're not trying to get rid of thoughts. We're simply noticing the silent environment in which your thoughts are occurring. The thoughts that come along and interrupt the silence are being generated out of your deeply suppressed emotions without you realizing that this is happening. You've been doing this your whole life. You're so used to it that you don't know that many of your thoughts are coming from the residue of your suppressed emotional pain. I sometimes refer to that as the residue -do of the emotional pain. But after you have this taste of happiness 2.0, I'm gonna to explain to you how you can clean up your inner emotional landscape and make the continuous experience of happiness 2.0 a reality in your life. I call the technique that I'm going to, that I'm about to teach you now, the quietness technique. And this is about experiencing your own essential nature. There's an analogy that can be very helpful here. And that is that thoughts occur in the mind like clouds occur in the sky on a partly cloudy day. Here's a partly cloudy day. And as you can see, all you have to do is look at the cloud and look off to the side and you can see the blue sky. The blue sky is there all the time in the background. It's present everywhere there and it never goes away. And so it's very easy to access it just by looking off to the side of the cloud. Here's a kind of version of clouds, uh, of thoughts being like clouds coming and going. Just a little graphic to kind of display that. So the quietness technique is about experiencing the background of silence that your thoughts occur in. So the way it'll work is I'm gonna have you close your eyes in a moment and you'll take a few moments to notice your thoughts coming and going. And then you'll look off to the side of the thoughts and simply notice the silent, empty background in which the thoughts are occurring. So you look off to the side of each thought as it occurs, and that silence is your own awareness, the very awareness you're using to experience the thoughts. So let's give it a shot. I'll walk you through it. So please close your eyes. And just notice what's present. You'll notice that you can feel yourself sitting on your chair or your bed or your sofa or wherever you are. And you can notice sounds in the environment, sound of my voice and other sounds. And the other predominant thing that you experience when you sit quietly with your eyes closed is you have thoughts coming and going in your mind. Plenty of them. And whether they come frequently or just now and then doesn't matter. It's pretty much everybody always still has thoughts coming. So what you do is you keep your eyes closed throughout the whole exercise. And what you do is you notice the thoughts that come. And as soon as they come, you look off to the side and notice the kind of empty, silent background in which they're occurring. Just like looking off to the side of the cloud and seeing the sky, as you look off to the side of the thoughts field of energy, you notice that there's this quietness there, silence, emptiness. And the emptiness is just kind of vast and limitless. But you won't stay in that quietness for a long time because another thought will come along and interrupt it. And that's okay because we're not trying to get rid of thoughts. We're just noticing the environment in which the thoughts occur. And so you just look off to the side of each thought as it comes. You don't even have to finish the sentence of the thought. The moment you notice that you're having a thought, you look off to the side, you notice that quiet, silent background. And just like the sky, it's always there, always there in the background. It's a great analogy, actually. So you do that each time you have a thought. 
And as you do that, each time you experience that vast silence, emptiness, you have a little more of a sense of the presence of it. It becomes more and more familiar each time you, you sort of taste it. So you can keep looking off to the side and noticing it again and again. And some, some of you may even have the experience of being able to continue to notice the silence, the presence of the silence, even while thoughts come and go. If you do, that's good. Okay, so that should be enough to give you a taste of pure awareness. This, this state of pure awareness is your, your own awareness. It's the very awareness you're using to experience the thoughts, to experience everything that you're experiencing, my voice, the video, your, all your sensations, your environment, everything. Your awareness is taking all that in and it's all falling on this blank, empty, vast, spacious screen of your awareness. We call it pure awareness because this, when you're in just the awareness itself, it is pure, there's nothing else there. And it's amazing that human beings have the ability, uh, human beings have the kind of nervous system that's sophisticated enough that it's possible for us to experience pure awareness and other experiences even at the same time. And that gets cultivated more and more as you clean out your inner emotional landscape. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to the PowerPoint. Anybody have any questions or experiences about that? Actually, we could just mention what are the qualities of that state? Obviously, it's vast, it's limitless, it's quiet, clearly it's quiet. It has this feeling of being, although it's kind of empty, you can still experience it. Now, most of our experiences are experiencing of things. 24 seven, we're experiencing objects of experience. But in pure awareness, there is no thing, and yet it's still an experience. We can still be aware and awake and experience it and know that we're experiencing our own awareness. This is our awareness being aware of our awareness. Most other experiences we have the subject, us, being aware of an object, some object like a, you know, something in the room, like a picture or a lamp or a table or a chair or your, your, your own body, whatever. Okay? But in pure awareness, awareness is simply being aware of awareness itself. So instead of three things, it's just one thing. Okay, coming back to the PowerPoint. We've already covered this. These are the qualities. Now, you'll notice that when you're in the quietness of pure awareness, there are no problems there. There can't be any problems because in order to have a problem, you have to have two, you have to have at least two things. You have to have something and something it's in conflict with. So there are no conflicts, there are no doubts. And it would be really cool to have this expansive, peaceful feeling always present in your life. So as I mentioned, you won't stay in the silence for a long time because the thoughts will interrupt it. And there are two kinds of thoughts. And this next chart, most of you have seen this, this will help you get the perspective of what these two energy fields are like of these thoughts. This is called the types of emotions model. And there are useful emotions. We have sometimes love, compassion, happiness, joy. Even fear can be useful if we're about to step out in the street and there's a, you know, electric car coming, not making any noise. We see it just the last moment and jump back. That jumping back is a useful version of fear, it keeps us safe. But the vast majority of our emotions are unresolved and not useful. And there are two kinds of these. The first kind we call painful internal emotions. These are traumas, emotional pain, heartbreak, resentment, grief, the list goes on and on. And we use what's called the in technique to resolve these. These energies are like tight knots or balls of energy the sensation of them, you can feel it's kind of localized in a, in a sort of constriction inside someplace, not necessarily in the solar plexus area, there could be anywhere. 
but that's one of the common places we store them. The other category of unresolved disruptive emotions are called reactive or external emotions. And these have two subcategories. One is called upset. And the upset involves things like anger, disappointment, frustration, sadness, depression. These are the upsets we have when we have an expectation that doesn't get fulfilled. The other subcategory is called fear. And fear has, again, the projection into the future of something. In this case, negative projection into the future. Something bad might happen. And this creates worry, fear, anxiety, panic attacks, hypervigilance, all this kind of stuff. And there's a different kind of energy created by this type of reaction. It's a cloud of energy that radiates out from the body. And like the graphic, it kind of surrounds us and engulfs us. And so this is called the out technique. So we have two techniques, in and out, and they're used for the different kinds of energy fields that our two different kinds of disruptive emotions create. So these accumulated suppressed emotions are what cause you to have what are called ego-based and emotional pain-based thoughts. You don't realize, that, realize it. Hmm. You don't realize during the day or during the quietness technique. I'm sorry, you don't realize it during the quiet. You don't realize it during the quietness technique, but it is your two databases of unresolved disruptive emotions that cause the thoughts that come. And these thoughts are at the basis of your conditioning. Most people live mainly as the product of their conditioning. They live in what are called illusions of separateness. This means that they're not living in happiness 2.0. You learn to suppress and avoid your emotional pain in very early childhood. And you got so good at it that you continue to do it frequently without even realizing you're doing it. What happens to the energy of the emotional pain that you can't process when they occur? Well, it becomes two databases of unresolved disruptive emotions. One of the databases is the unresolved pain as just shown on the types of emotions chart. And uh, the other database is what are called reactive emotions. The incomplete experiences of emotional pain that you couldn't fully process when they happened are energies held in your body as localized constricted feelings. Everybody has lots of these energies held in their body. We refer to them as in-technique energies because that's the name of the technique we use in order to resolve them. The other database of unresolved emotions are called reactive emotions. And these are the unresolved disruptive energy patterns we call out-technique energies. Everybody has lots of both these kinds of energies. And <clears throat> these are called emotional pain-based thoughts. These are at the root of what are called emotional pain-based thoughts. The thoughts that are caused by unresolved reactive emotions, we call ego-based thoughts. In addition to the ego-based and emotional pain-based thoughts, you also have practical thoughts and intuitive thoughts. Practical thoughts and intuitive thoughts don't have any disruptive emotional energies at their basis. The ego and emotionally pain-based thoughts do have disruptive emotional energies at their basis. So they're quite different. And you also haven't known that it is possible to distinguish the useful ones from the not useful ones. Just another point on this before carrying on with the PowerPoint. The practical intuitive thoughts, because they have no emotional charge, they have a different quality about them than the ego and emotionally pain-based thoughts. And when you're having, for example, an intuitive thought, I call it remembering the future, because as the physicists say, the mathematics of the past and future are identical. How come we can only remember the past? Well, they're good at the math, but they're not so good at understanding human conditioning. Everyone's remembering the future frequently. It's just that we've been conditioned to negate it and not trust it and not follow it. The people who are really successful in life People like you know Steve Jobs, Oprah Winfrey, Winston Churchill, Albert Einstein, these kind of people, they all have quotes about that the key to their success 
was in being able to recognize and follow their intuition. So <clears throat> most people don't know <clears throat> that it is possible to distinguish the useful thoughts from the not useful thoughts. Most importantly, you haven't known that there are a couple of simple techniques to easily and quickly find and resolve the disruptive emotions at the basis of your ego and emotional pain-based thoughts. Uh, going back for just a moment, the practical and intuitive thoughts are the useful ones and they don't have any emotional charge and they are the experience of things in reality. The ego and emotionally pain-based thoughts are generated out of the unresolved disruptive emotions and they create they create thoughts that are not actually in reality. They're only in the mind. And this is why they can't come about. Hmm? They can't come about. I mean, if you, if you have an intuition about something to be feared, that intuition is, is good because then you organize yourself to not be there or to do whatever you need to do to avoid whatever that fearful thing was. That's an intuitive thought. But most fears, the vast majority of fears, are projections of possible negative outcomes onto the future that don't come true, that are just the habit of, of doing that, which pretty much everybody on the planet uh, does quite a lot of. Okay, more importantly, you haven't known that there are a couple of simple techniques to easily and quickly find and resolve the disruptive emotions at the basis of your ego and emotionally pain-based thoughts. This is a phenomenal development. How is it that I know this and can say it so confidently? That's because in 1993, I got shot in the chest by a deranged stranger right at my front door. In addition to the physical healing, I had PTSD with all the symptoms, nightmares, flashbacks, startle response, hypervigilance, on and on. There are about 20 such experiences. I didn't believe the psychological dogma that PTSD is incurable. I intuitively felt that they must be missing something. This led me to do my own private research to see if I could find a way to cure the PTSD. It took a while to find the answer I was looking for, but I was very fortunate to discover a simple insight that allowed me to completely cure my PTSD. All the PTSD symptoms disappeared within a few days, and I haven't had any PTSD symptoms for over 25 years. There are not many people on the planet that can say that they cured themselves of PTSD. In fact, I don't know anybody else other than my own clients and students. So this is a pretty rare and unusual thing. More about disruptive emotions and conditioning. The thing that causes it to be difficult to distinguish between useful and not useful thoughts requires more than just being told to notice and favor your useful thoughts. I mean, many of these spiritual teachers just say, oh, just notice, things. just notice. Well, most people can't do that. Uh, the generating of not useful thoughts is a deeply conditioned way of being. And the conditioning is powerful. You can't change it by just deciding that you want to, or that just deciding I'm going to change it. It requires some new abilities. The conditioning will always win. It's much too well entrenched. To be aware of the difference between useful and not useful thoughts and to only act on the useful ones and not act on the not useful ones requires an ability to make conscious something that has been unconscious for your whole life. People are not conscious of this difference. This is because you've been having both useful and not useful thoughts your whole life and not making the distinction between them, not even realizing that that's possible. And as a result, you tend to not be fully aware of it when you have them. It's a deeply conditioned habit. And the unresolved emotional energies at the basis of the not useful thoughts, they're so well suppressed that you don't even realize that there is emotional energy at the root of such thoughts. It seems like all your thoughts are just normal. Is there a solution to this problem? Thank God, fortunately, there is. The ability to consistently determine if there's residual emotional energy at the root of a given thought can be greatly enhanced with something called muscle testing and with the pure awareness techniques. There are two parts to making a change from not being aware of something to becoming aware of it. One part is intellectually understanding that gaining this awareness is an essential and important part of becoming a fully realized conscious being. 
The second part is knowing that there is a reason why you are not sufficiently aware of your not useful thoughts. This is caused by conditioning. This conditioning comes from having ego-based and emotionally pain-based thoughts all your life without realizing that this is happening. This makes the ego and emotional pain-based thoughts seem as if they're just a natural part of human experience. Here's a short video of psychologists talking about the problem of the ego being so difficult to recognize. The ego is the worst confidence trickster we could ever figure, we could ever imagine, because you don't see it. And the single biggest con is, I am you. The problem is that the ego hides in the last place that you'd ever look within itself. It disguises its thoughts as your thoughts, its feelings as your feelings. It, you think it's you. People's need to protect their own egos knows no bounds. They will lie, cheat, steal, kill, do whatever it takes to maintain what we call ego boundaries. People have no clue that they're in prison. They don't know that there is an ego. They don't know the distinction. At first, it's difficult for the mind to accept that there's some something beyond itself, that there's something uh, of, of greater value and greater capacity for discerning truth than itself. In religion, the ego manifests as the devil. And of course, no one realizes how smart the ego is because it created the devil so you could blame someone else. In creating uh, this imaginary external enemy, we usually, usually made a, a real enemy for ourselves. And that becomes a real danger to the ego, but that's also the ego's creation. There is no such thing as an external enemy, no matter what that voice in your head is telling you. All perception of an enemy is a projection of the ego as the enemy. In that sense, you could say that 100% of our external enemies are of our own creation. Your greatest enemy is your own inner perception, is your own ignorance, is your own ego. So these psychology experts understand the problem, but I haven't heard anything about them offering any kind of solution. In fact, they talk about it as if there isn't a solution, that it's just how things are. They seem to believe that not being aware of the ego and its influence is just the way that human beings are. Although this phenomenon is very common, it is not natural. In the, pure, in the Permanent Peer Awareness Masterclass, we'll be removing the energies of identifications that keep us locked into illusions of separateness. Those will be illusions like, I am the doer, I am the knower, I'm my body, I'm my mind, I'm my personality, I'm my past experiences. These are the kind of things that people don't think about. They just function inside of them, just assuming that that's how things are. But these are actually all deeply conditioned uh, responses that people become identified with. That's what we're going to attack in the Permanent Peer Awareness course. We're going to learn how to find the energies at the basis of those identifications and completely resolve them, thus freeing us up from these invisible, very insidious uh, kinds of barriers that keep you from living in pure awareness all the time. Okay, there, these are the ego-based thoughts that the psychologists were talking about. They don't seem to have a solution, but we do. The Permanent Peer Awareness Masterclass was created specifically to get at and resolve these patterns of conditioning that have been so difficult or seemingly impossible to even know that they're there. But now with the proper use of muscle testing and the pure awareness techniques, we can not only find these energy patterns, but we can get rid of them for good. As you clean up your inner emotional landscape, you will have fewer and fewer ego and emotionally pain-based thoughts. When enough of the residual emotional energy is gone, you start to live more and more in a state of pure awareness. This is when you start to really experience happiness 2.0. There seem to be two levels or stages of the experience of happiness 2.0. The first level is like a partly cloudy day. We'll use that analogy again. You can see the sky, even though there's still some clouds in it. 
The second level is more like a pure blue sky, no clouds. Somewhere along your journey of cleaning up your inner emotional landscape, a very fundamental shift happens. Up until it happens, you'll be starting to experience pure awareness more and more often, and it will stay present for longer periods of time. And your life, eh, all your life, you've been living with a sense of self-definition. This is basically what we call the ego. You've been identified with the stories about your life experiences, and you've had deeply conditioned uh, ways of being in these experiences and having included conditioning from your upbringing, your religion, the government, the media, movies, books, everything. And all these things have defined you. It seems like that's what you are. All of these patterns of conditioning are held in place by the residual energies of the unresolved disruptive emotions. The reason I'm now offering the Permanent Pure Awareness Masterclass is because many of you are starting to have the experience of pure awareness being present more and more. And I'd like to show you kind of the progression of how this develops. First, you learn the freedom practice. That's the flagship first training that we give everyone now, no matter what training they're getting, they take uh, freedom practice first. And in the freedom practice, you learn the in, out, and locate techniques, also the quietness technique, but that's part of the locate technique, so I didn't separate it out, and muscle testing. You do the freedom practice, and you start to clean out your inner emotional landscape. And then you begin to integrate your new emotional skills into your life, and you do that by, you start to become more conscious of what ego and emotionally pain-based thoughts are, and when you have them during the day, you become curious and you sort of recognize, oh, I wonder if that's an ego-based thought. And you muzzle test and sure enough it is. And then you do the locate technique, you find the energy and you resolve it with the appropriate pure awareness technique, guiding the whole process with the wisdom of your body through the muscle testing. So then you take special courses and use the techniques to clean out barriers to having ideal relationships, abundance, excellent health, all the different major areas of your life, the kind of things that wouldn't necessarily come up just during the day as part of your general daily thought process. Uh, these are things that we identify ahead of time that are the barriers to having really ideal life in each of these areas. So this is another stage of cleaning out your inner emotional landscape to prepare you and make it possible for you to naturally live in that happiness 2.0 state all the time. So as you start to experience the presence of awareness more and more in your life, you will then need to get at and resolve the remaining things from your conditioning that are keeping you living with a self-definition. That's when you're ready to take the Permanent Pure Awareness Masterclass. It's designed to expose and get rid of these most insidious patterns of conditioning that continue to keep you locked in your self-definition. These turn out to be the only things that have been keeping you from living happiness 2.0 all the time. This is not superficial. It's a new state of consciousness. The sense of yourself changes from living as an isolated individual who is separate from everything to experiencing that what you really are is the unbounded, vast, limitlessness of pure awareness. And in fact, in this state, you are the totality of everything and you actually experience yourself as that. And so there is no longer a need for self-definition so you can kind of you know, determine what you think you are. That's what you think you are. When you're living in pure awareness all the time, you are the totality of everything. And that's your actual experience. You make a transition to experientially knowing that your essential nature is happiness 2.0. You are that. For some people this happens and then they slip back into the former state of being self-defined for a period of time. That can happen when it's not totally cleaned up yet. If you know what is happening, then you simply know that you just have to stay the distance and that this is your particular version of the partly cloudy day. 
So in the Permanent Peer Awareness Masterclass, our intention is to continue to clean up so that the clouds are no longer there and that you don't have any need for our, this isolating sense of self-definition. Then you make the shift to pure, pure blue sky, permanent pure awareness, permanent happiness 2.0. The saying we are all one is true. You can even sense the truth of it when you start getting tastes of pure awareness. And by the way, being one with everything and, and anything and everything, we don't want it to be just an intellectual idea, which is what it is for most of the people who are involved in teaching courses in spirituality and spiritual development. Now you can cultivate the continuous experience of wholeness, pure awareness, happiness 2.0, so that it's there all the time. And all you need to do that is to clean up your inner emotional landscape well enough that the pure awareness just shines through unobstructed. At Inner Greatness Global, we are so proud that we have discovered and developed a systematic path to being able to live and enjoy your inner greatness fully. Even if you are at or near the beginning of your journey of cleaning up your inner emotional landscape, you may wanna take the Permanent Peer Awareness Master Course Masterclass anyway in its first version, which will be live classes. And they'll be given by me. And this is so that you can participate, ask questions, et cetera. In the future, you'll probably not only, it'll probably only be available from the recorded videos. I'm probably not, this is gonna be a long course. Whether you take it now or later, the video recordings will be available indefinitely so that you can always watch them again. So the schedule is that the Permanent Peer Awareness Masterclass will begin on Thursday, June 30th at our 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. That's our normal class meeting time. And it'll continue on Thursday evenings each week for quite some time. Uh, how many classes will there be? Well, it's hard to say. It's hard to predict the number of classes as the number of topics we can cover in a given class is likely to vary. And in addition, we're also going to have uh, covered lists of conditioning and assumptions of your deepest traumas that are already planned for the course, as well as some private individualized conditioning and other barriers that might be preventing you from living in happiness 2.0 all the time. The basic idea is we want to create a situation where you can truly live in that pure blue sky of pure awareness all the time. I've created a special section at the top of the catalog page on the website with the various different registration links because there are different options. And so the, to register for the master class, what you do is you go to the integratenessglobal.com website, which looks like this. And you can see up at the top here, there's an arrow pointing to the URL. Hope you can see that. Yeah, I think so. Integratenessglobal.com. So you go there and then on the right side, you can see the catalog. So you click on the catalog menu and what you'll get is at the top, I've put all the, whoops, all the registration links for the various different versions of the class that you can sign up for. I've, I've purposefully attempted to make this doable for as many people as possible. So in addition to just having the class with a price for it, I've also broken it up into monthly payments of only $111 a month. So if you have a budgetary issue of not being able to pay the whole amount at once, this gives you an option to spread it out over some number of months. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, <clears throat> Yeah, I'm going to um, close the uh, PowerPoint in just a moment and go to the website so I can walk you through what the various different registration options are, and then we'll be done. So the course is highly synergistic. I'm sorry, I'm back up here a moment. So you'll find the registration options for the unconditional love course right at the same place on the catalog page. And the reason for that is that the 
Unconditional Love Course is not only highly synergistic with the Permanent Pure Awareness Masterclass, but it's that's because unconditional love is pure awareness. And so there's some stuff in that course that's highly synergistic with what we're doing with Permanent Pure Awareness. And the reason we're doing it is that there's a number of people who signed up for unconditional love back when we offered a bundle of love without attachment as a course and unconditional love as a course. And there are quite a number of people who signed up for both. So there have been people who have been waiting to start the unconditional love classes. And what happened was I got this uh, fascination with uh, the uh, new um, waveform optimizing process and put a lot of attention on developing that. So we, we, we missed a number of weeks without starting the unconditional love class, but that's gonna start on next Monday. And it'll be every Monday each week. Permanent Peer Awareness Masterclass will be every Thursday each week. Those are the two days we've been having classes in the past that seem to work for most people. Those are at 5.30 on uh, each day. Now, you can read about the Unconditional Love Course from the page about it on the website that's linked to it on, on the registration options area. So I look forward to helping you live permanently in the pure blue sky of pure awareness, happiness 2.0. And I'll close the PowerPoint now and open the catalog so you know where to find it. And I'll explain the different registration options. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to leave the recording on while I do this so that people who watch the video also have an understanding of how to access the registration uh, links. Okay, so that was fun. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go to the screen share again and I'm gonna open the, the uh, let's see where it is. Huh. So when I had it all, lined up here. Well, let's do it this way. Huh. Okay, here's the catalog index page. That's what I was looking for. And now we'll go back to it with the screen share. Okay, catalog index. So when you go to the catalog index, which you can access here, okay, at the catalog menu on the on all the pages of Integrateness Global Site, when you go to catalog index, you'll see these different options for registration. First of all, if you haven't taken the freedom practice, the freedom practice is a prerequisite. So if you're watching this video and you're not involved with this work yet, the place to start is with the freedom practice. So when you click on that link, it'll take you to a page all about the freedom practice. And there are two registration options, one for 297, one for 497 that includes a coaching session. And so you can read that and take your pick. But once you've started the freedom practice and you've learned, you're going to learn the basics in that of how to muscle test, you're going to learn the in and out techniques, the quietness and locate techniques, and you'll have the foundation for being able to participate in any of the other trainings that we have. And if you want to go right to the Permanent Pure Awareness Masterclass after that, or to the Unconditional Love class, that's all fine. You can take any of those classes. So the... <clears throat> The uh, Freedom Practice page has all this detail on it, including something about what's called a um, decision influences assessment that teaches you how to distinguish between the practical thoughts and intuitive thoughts, and also the ego and emotionally pain-based thoughts, and uh, teaches you the basics of how to do this work. The next link is the Permanent Pure Awareness Masterclass link. And if you wanna just take this class and you haven't yet uh, taken the Extraordinary Coach Training class, then this is the link for you, okay? So then what you wanna do is to go here, click the Add to Cart button, and that'll get you signed up for the 
Permanent Peer Awareness course. These Some of these links to other things are on the same page. Okay, that's the main one that most people will be using. For those of you who are um, already in the Extraordinary Coach Training class, because you've already registered for that, you've been involved with that, there is a special discount for taking the Permanent Peer Awareness class, only $4.97, so you save 200 bucks if you're already uh, an, e an ECT um, participant. So you can go there and you can, um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, you can go here and register for 497 if you're already uh, an extraordinary coach training participant. All righty, so then there's also, you can take the permanent peer awareness class with monthly payments to make it easier to take. So seven payments of 111, there's a little extra cost there because there's slightly more administration and work, but in any case, um, 111 a month, probably affordable for most people. I tried to make it so, so that should be fine. And uh, that total will come to 777. So it's a little, little higher than just paying the full price. If you'd rather save the money and pay the full price and it's easy for you, then I recommend you do it that way. Okay. And the next one is Unconditional Love. That's the course that I mentioned that's complimentary. And this explains a bit about the course. And then there's a registration. You don't want to do this registration for both. That also would include the Love Without Attachment unless you want that too, you can go read about that as well. Okay, and then we have Permanent Peer Awareness Class and Unconditional Love. If you take the two of those both together, the price is $794. And then we also have a, uh, we also have a version of the registration that allows you to do that in monthly payments. So that would be eight monthly payments of 11, 111, to a total of 888. So again, a little bit more than just the full payment price. That's actually to encourage you to make the full payment price now. <laughs> so then we have, uh, let's see. There's, uh, let's see what this special discount one is. Hmm. Not sure why I have that link on that page. Then we have, yeah, the Pure Awareness Masterclass plus Unconditional Love with monthly payments. And that one is eight payments of 111. And so that gives you a variety of different possibilities to uh, sign up. And as I mentioned, the people who are already in the extraordinary uh, coach training get a $200 discount and the class is only uh, $497. Okay, so if you have any questions about any of this, you can drop me an email at tom, tom at innergreatnessglobal.com. And uh, again, I have to thank you for coming. It's been a pleasure to have you here. And uh, any questions before I close? We're good. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'm gonna put the video up on the Slack group and we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. All the best, everyone. Take care.